All right, back for another beer review. And today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from Revolution Brewing. And they are out of Chicago, Illinois. And this is their Grave Digger Billy. And this is a part of their Deep Wood series. And this is the 2022 release. So they're calling this one a Scotch Ale aged in bourbon barrels. It comes in at 14.2% alcohol by volume. No IBUs less than time of review. And this can is approximately six and a half months old. I'm gonna give a huge thanks and shout out once again to a friend of mine and a viewer of the channel, Clayton, for hooking me up with this one. So big thanks to him for this beer. In the description box, I'll post a link to the beer mail unboxing video I did that contains all the goodies Clayton hooked me up with. And this is the last Revolution beer from his box. He sent me Mineshaft Gap, which I believe was a cognac barrel aged barley wine. Delicious. One of the best Revolution beers I've ever had. Number two was their uh, Blackberry Finn, which was a barrel aged barley wine with blackberries. Also delicious. And then this one. Now, full disclosure, I've had this one before, but it was the 2014 vintage. And back then, this beer was only 9.7% alcohol by volume. So this is 4.5% bigger. And over the years, it seems like they have bumped up the ABV. And uh, when I had it back then, I, it was very comparable to Backwoods Bastard from Founders. But I found that Grave Digger Billy had more of a um, emphasis on the base uh, beer, more like that multi goodness caramel toffee, a little bit of smoke um, from the base malts, and a little bit less and lighter on the barrel itself. But it was delicious. I think it gave it like a 475 on untapped. I drank it in 2015, despite it being the 2014 vintage. So that was seven years ago that I had this beer. I'm really curious to see what they do with this one. Now, on the label here, it says, an old favorite from the early days of Revolution makes a return. This bourbon barrel aged Scott Ale, decked out in a fine tartan kilt, has a delicate smokiness alongside American oak and bourbon character. Pour a wee dram and let the brogue fly. Don't be daft. Enjoy now or store, or store cold. This is, uh, you know, the latest release um, as far as Grave Digger Billy goes, so it's not like an aged uh, beer. I mean, slightly aged, six and a half months, but it's not like a year old or anything. Anyway, let's get this into the glass that we've got going on here. I'm going to pour this a little bit more aggressive to try to generate a better head um, because a lot of these, the head will fizzle out. Ooh, look at that. I may have poured a little bit aggressive, huh? We'll see if it sticks around. Typically, you know, 14.2% beer isn't going to hang around, head-wise anyway. Almost got it all in there. We should be fine here. Yeah, so we'll see how long this head sticks around. I, I'd imagine not that long, but I could be wrong because I typically am. Um, Scotch ales are one of those, one of those, a um, little bit of a thing off camera here, a little wiping my finger. Uh, one of those um, styles that, you know, just not a lot of American breweries uh, really brew. Uh, again, I love Dirty Bastard from Founders, Backwoods Bastard, one of the best barrel leaf barley wines. I haven't had that in a long time, but as far as I recall. And then this I've had before and uh, it was really delicious. Anyway, pours out that deep mahogany, like deep black cherry type of color. On camera might be more of a pitch black or a deep dark brown, but in person, definitely deep mahogany color. Had a three finger of this tannish um, colored head, a um, little bit soap sudsy, and now has dissipated to like a half finger, probably be a thin film by the time we're done with it. Alcohol legs all over the glass because it is 14.2%. Let's get a nose. And cry. Listen, listen, listen. Here, get a little bit close. A little bit of ASMR. Let me tell you something. You know, I don't really search out whales anymore. Like, as far why am I should, should I whisper this? I don't honestly search out whales anymore. Like that was something I did five, six, seven years ago. I don't have FOMO. Um, I used to have it to some degree. Um, really don't have that anymore. If I fucking could get revolution beers, I would just buy for my barrel age fix, I would buy two different. I guess, series or two different uh, beers from two different breweries that produce awesome barrel aged beers. Be Revolution and it'd be Bourbon County when it's released every year. Maybe sprinkle in some Firestone Walker. That's all I'd need. <laughs> That's all I would need as far as like barrel aged beers go. This smells fucking dynamite. There is so much caramel and toffee and like molasses, even a little bit of butterscotch. The malt in here is fucking superb. It's just like over the top. It's great. But then you get the barrel. There's there's the vanillins. There's vanilla. There's oak. There's actual bourbon spirit character. Getting a little bit of like a dark cherry. Maybe like a a darker grape as well, like a, a grape skin, like a tannic kind of vibe. There is a nice smokiness. They mentioned smokiness, but I also said that at the beginning. Um, yeah, these beers, the, the Scotch ales give off a little bit of smokiness for sure. This is a Scotch ale slash wee heavy, I guess you would... You would say? It just smells 
like so much malt. If you're somebody who doesn't like malt forward beers, if you're like a, a good friend of mine, a fellow beer tuber, Ridge over at Ridgeopolis, who is just not a malt guy, and that's why he drinks like hop forward beers and just doesn't like a lot of malt forward beers, like I he I don't think he'd like this one. <laughs> that's how much malt is in in this uh, in this nose. Almost like a marzipan. There's like almost like a nuttiness. There's there's something there's just something different about this. It's just, I just want to sniff this. Like, that's not this what this review is going to be. Me sniffing this for fucking 12 minutes and that's it. But that's what I want it to be. Maybe a touch of cola vibes too. If that makes any sense. What is that? Here's something I don't say too often and I'm getting it. It has almost a leathery, like, tobacco type of thing going on. Like, very slight in the nose, but it's there for sure. As it starts to open up the glass, my again, I always mention my darker beer fridge at 52. This is probably 55 to 58 right now. Does it say what to drink it at? A lot of times they give the recommended temperature. No, no, no. Am I just blind? Am I blind? Yeah, they don't really say when to drink. But I mean, I feel like a beer like this should be you know, a little bit warmer. Anyway, it smells fucking awesome. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again to Clayton. Okay, it's boozy, and it's 14.2%, so you might be watching this and be like, what the fuck is, what? of course it's going to be boozy, you idiot, but Revolution does a great job hiding the booze in a lot of their beers. That Blackberry Finn, though, had a decent amount of booze. This is boozier. Instant barrel heat on the on the palate, and then the chest, huge warming, on fire right now. I'll go back for another sip because I feel like my palate needs to be acclimated to this properly before I start breaking it down. Body in this one, like lower side of full, for 14.2%, this is definitely thin. I thought it'd be a little bit thicker. Definitely thin. The mouthfeel, it's soft and smooth, not necessarily creamy, but soft and smooth. Has carbonation, but has more of a smooth kind of feeling to it. So body's, you know, a little bit thin. Mouthfeel's fine. Nothing amazing. The taste, I need to fight through that barrel because the barrel's kind of dominating my palate right now. The, the nose was all about that base malt. And the beer itself, and then had some of the barrel qualities. In the taste, it's it's like it's basically flipped. It's done. A, it's 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 hit a one eighty, so to speak. Now, to be fair, to be far, for anybody out there watches Letter Kenny, you probably get that reference. If not, you're just like this guy's a fucking idiot, and I am. Um, this is fourteen point two percent, and when I'm trying to think back to. The 2014 vintage I had, which was 9.7%, clearly the barrel was not as intense. It wasn't as boozy. So I'm trying to, in my mind, think about that before I start talking about beer. When we're sitting, we'll start breaking it down. Yeah, so now my palate's starting to get slightly acclimated. That malt's coming in, in, you know, into play here, but it's not still as big as the nose. Caramel, toffee, molasses. A little bit of smokiness as well. There's almost like a toasted brown bread type of thing happening as well as far as the malt is concerned at the front of the palate. A little bit of dark cherry, a little bit of that darker grape. Um, the marzipan really didn't carry over, but lots of malt at the front. But a lot of times I say halfway through the palate, I think like maybe a third of the way through the palate, the barrel hits. The barrel hits early in this one compared to most of their uh, beers and most of the beers in general that I drink that are barrel aged. And when it hits, it just comes in vanilla. It's vanilla, and it's this really dry, like gripping uh, oak tannin kind of feeling to it. That carries on in the back of the palate. And on the back of the palate, the bourbon shows its uh, true colors of you know the actual spirit itself. Has a little like a peppery bourbon type of thing happening. This finishes semi dry. I was gonna say semi full on, but I think more semi dry, uh, with like a mild to moderate bitterness. I think more of the dryness and the slight bittering sensation is coming from the oak tannin dryness or the perceived oak tannin dryness. This is a big boozy monster of a beer. Even though my palate is now fully acclimated, I feel it's still like in the chest, super warm on the palate. Definitely is some, somewhat astringent. Um, it's stopping me from loving this beer because the nose, I would give it a five out of five. That carried over taste, 100% five out of five. But then I taste it and it's like, the, to me, I really like the flavors, but the barrel's such a predominant figure in this beer that it's kind of overwhelming the palate to some degree. Do a little bit of a swirl sniff here, almost like it is a, a bourbon. A little bit of like a, a leather and tobacco, like I was getting the nose. It's very subtle, but it's there. 
Yeah, a couple things. I want this to be a little, <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy, 14.2%. I think it's too dry. I said semi-dry. I believe that oak tannin dryness is just every single sip kind of keeps on just being more intense and bold and kind of ramping up. And my my palate now is like kind of devoid of most saliva. Not all. So this is like semi to full on dry now, officially. I want a little bit more. I want this to finish a little sweeter and less dry. And I think I want that barrel to be kind of pushed to the wayside a little bit. Be honest with you, that 9.7% 2014 vintage was way better than this. I gave that again a 47548. I gave it 475 on a tap, but I would I think I remember that one being fucking close to a five. Um, this is not that at all. This is gonna get like a half point lower. It's still really good as far as like a barrel aged beer goes. And this is coming from someone who really appreciates and likes Scotch ale slash wee heavies. I feel there's not enough here in America being brewed, and certainly not enough barrel aged ones. And the barrel aged ones that I have had have been awesome. And even just like the regular Scotch slash wee heavies have been really good from a lot of a lot of breweries that I enjoy. But I really haven't seen too many uh, newer breweries kind of take their stab at the style because it's it's kind of a dying style, to be honest with you, as far as American craft beer goes. Um, but it's a really fun style, especially if you like that, you know, smoky kind of like, you know, again, leathery tobacco type of thing going on, but like a lot of malt character in general. It, it, it definitely delivers on that. I don't think there's much more to say about this one. Um, again, gave it a 475 on a tap for the 2014 vintage. This isn't close. It's still really good though. I'm gonna drink the rest of that and be feeling great. But this could have been way better. So um, to me, Gravedigger Billy, part of their Deep Wood series, the 2022 release from Revolution. Best I can do on this one is a low 425. I'm gonna go 4.15. I think that's the best I can do. I think that might even be generous. Maybe this is a high four, like a 40541. But um, yeah, I just think the nose was such like it happened so often. Just occasional, I guess. Maybe I shouldn't say. It happens every so often, we'll say, where the nose just sets me up for disappointment, and that's exactly what happened here. Is it a good beer? Yes. Is it disappointing? Yes. Um, if the nose carried over, this is like close to a five, 100%. It didn't, so here we are. Price point availability. Uh, shout out to a friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Ross. He told me that like the regular uh, death or death um, from Revolution and like the regular straight jacket, not like the crazy variants. I think he said they're like 30 bucks. Uh, four pack and then he said some of the variants are getting to 35 and then some are 40 and then some are like yeah you know, fucking 50 like a very special old jacket for example um i don't know what this costs if this was 35 to 40 bucks a four pack i would not personally pay that again for this um it used to come in the 22 ounce bombers in the uh the boxes kind of like a uh, firestone walker and i want to say i paid maybe like 12 10 12 bucks for that when i bought it back in the day so you know if this is you know, 10 bucks for a 12 ounce can and you're getting like almost half half as much beer for a similar price, I wouldn't pay. And plus I gave it a 4.15. That doesn't dictate to me an eight to $10 12 ounce can. But if you really love this beer, then I don't think it's a bad price point. Availability, like I always said, we're revolution. I really don't know. I know if you live in and around the Chicago area, you can get your hands on them. Some of their uh, barrel aged releases, they make out the Michigan and Ohio and Indiana and a lot through the Midwest. But here in the West New York area, in the Buffalo, New York area specifically, you don't see their stuff really at all. Um, but I will say that they make great barrel aged beers and I'd be happy if I could pick up any of them locally because they're just fucking delicious. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. If you've had this one before, post in the comment section. If you've had this variant, uh, I shouldn't say variant, this, um, uh, vintage specifically post in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about this one. If you had one from prior years, let me know what you think. Like I said, had the 2014 and I think it's significantly better than this one. I think the higher ABV doesn't necessarily make the beer better. In, in this case, to me, it made it worse. Um, and again, not a bad beer in the least. Gave it a good score. Just goddamn was that nose amazing. So thanks again to Clayton for this beer. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. To the next one. Cheers.